Hi, my name is Ramini Bodipour, Senior Cloud Engineer at Netscope. And today I'm gonna to show you a quick demo of how we can address the growing concern around zero trust and least privilege access to ensure that only authorized users and devices have access to your applications. In this demo, we replace the old exhausted legacy VPN concentrators with Netscope Zero Trust Network Access. Now this has two major advantages. One is scale, as more and more users move outside the perimeter but still require access to applications in your data center or applications in AWS, those legacy VPN solutions just aren't going to scale. With Zero Trust Network Access, we're not limited to the hardware restrictions or concurrent session limits that come with a traditional deployment. Furthermore, having to set up MPLS or site-to-site -site VPN connections and architect a robust VPN framework can be very challenging and very expensive. The second major advantage is that Zero Trust Network Access runs on the same infrastructure as Netscope's next-gen secure web gateway, which includes all of the traditional CASB, as well as advanced DLP functionalities, as well as SWIG capabilities. And we do this without having to deploy any additional clients or set up any user profiles for VPN access. Everything is configured and controlled in one SaaS delivered platform. In addition, we integrate with major IDP providers such as Okta and Ping. That way we can provide granular access control to applications based on users and groups that you already have set up. We make it real easy to control who has access to which application and where that application resides. All right, so this is a simple diagram uh, to show you um, the architecture. We, on the left side here, we have a corporate data center uh, with some applications, Splunk and Ubiquity. On the right side here, we have a uh, AWS data center that's running Jira and GitHub. And traditionally, when a user wanted to connect to these applications, they would have to VPN into your corporate data center or they would have to be inside the perimeter. The corporate data center would typically have a site-to-site -site VPN connection with AWS, which as you know, can be very expensive. So the routes associated with connecting to these applications typically have to backhaul through your corporate data center. With Netscope NPA, with a single client on the endpoint that you already have that's controlling access to uh, sanctioned applications via CASB and Secure Web Gateway, we can steer clients to those applications in each individual data center without having to backhaul that traffic. So let's take a look at the policy constructs for this uh, architecture. We have two simple uh, rules here. One is allow access to applications in AWS. And we can set this granularly as well. We can specify a user, we can specify a group, we can specify all users, and we can specify what applications we want them to have access to. And over here, we have another rule for our, data, our corporate data center, which again, provides access to certain applications. And again, we can set it granularly if we wanted to restrict access to certain users. So let's take a look and see how that works. So I'm gonna first disable my Netscope client. And I'm gonna try to access an application that's sitting in my AWS environment. And as you can see here, we're going to a private subnet in AWS. It's not publicly exposed and we can't access this application. Let's try another one. Let's try our corporate data center. I really need to extract some logs from Splunk. So I really need to be able to get in and I don't wanna to have to VPN. Well, we can't access that obviously. And you can see here, we have a private IP address associated with Splunk Enterprise as well. And then lastly, I want to try to manage some Wi-Fi users and let me try to access that from my remote location. We can't do that. And, and just to be clear, I am sitting in a remote location. I'm not on my corporate data center. I'm not connected to my data center in any way. And we can't access those applications without the client. So let's turn on our Netscope client, which would be running all the time, by the way. And you can enforce whether or not you can disable it or enable it. And now let's try to access those applications again. So as you can see here, we can still get to that same, we can now get to that private IP address that's sitting in AWS and we can access my Jira application. We can also get to the IP address that's sitting in my corporate data center where I manage my Splunk enterprise. And then lastly, we can also get to our Wi-Fi configuration controller so that we can manage our guest Wi-Fi users. All of this is made possible because of Netscope NPA and the client that we have installed on the endpoint. We can control access to certain applications based on users and groups and we can stand this up in a relatively short amount of time. So that's the power of Netscope NPA. Thank you and have a great day.